You've finished the season, but it's not time to rest on your laurels. It's time to prep for the new season. And this is how I go about it. How's it going everyone? Welcome back to the channel. Now today's a little bit different. We're going to get a bit more detail today. So it might be a bit longer. So I'm going to break it up into chapters. If you want to pop in and pop out. It's all about how I prep for the new season. We're going to use my Messina save that I did over on Twitch. Here it is. Now we've just finished our second season with Messina. The first season we got promoted as champions of Serie C. Second season predicted to finish rock bottom. You can see there 20th. We actually finished sixth. Got to the playoffs. I nearly did it. We nearly did it. We're so close. So what do I do now? What do I do? I've shown that we've got the potential to challenge at the top of Serie B. We need to prep now to make sure we're doing all we can for the new season. And that's what today's video is all about. And it's a pretty good place to start because sometimes when you're Twitch streaming on a Twitch save, you forget little things. Like I'm pretty sure I forgot to do my staffing and things like that. And that's one of the categories we're going to work through. The categories are coming up next, so you can work through them at your leisure, pop in and pop out. But this is the way I go about it. It's a bit detailed, so you, the geeks among you, you're going to like this one. We're going to get into it right now. So here we go. This is the first thing I do when I finish the season. We've had a good season. It's time to improve and build on the team. So initially, the first thing I do is this, and the more detailed version of this is coming up next. But first, my team, quality, but who do I think needs replaced? So to help myself in the transfer market, I go around the squad and have a look. Now, I know the players that I feel like I need replaced. Vukcevic, for example, a great goal scorer for me, but he's already decided that he's leaving at the end of the season. So we instantly take him out. I know now I need an advance forward. The same goes for Baldanzi. Unfortunately, I can't renew his loan because Empoli won him back. Out he comes. I'm already lacking two strikers. When we go to centre-back, I've been moaning about them all season. Anyone on the stream will know this. I know that I need at least two new centre-backs. So you can see now gaps are starting to form in the first 11. And this will remind me when I go into the transfer market what I need. I'm happy with the two wing-backs. They stay. This kid in goals is probably going to leave us. He's only on loan. Off he goes. Now you can see already, even though we've had a successful season, I've got one, two, three, four, five big gaps that I know when I go into the transfer market, I can focus on them and not get carried away with all the players that are available and sign players that I don't need. And that's the big tip off this one. When you go into the off season, especially with free transfers and loans, you just see all these players, you think, yes, I'll take him, yes, I'll take him, yes, I'll take him. And before you know it, you've got 17 strikers, four wingers, and one right back. So that way, when I've got the team laid out like that, I can keep back referring to it and I can see the gaps. I know exactly what I need. You can do exactly the same thing with your bench. If you're happy with your backup players, load your bench. If you're not, take them out and then you'll know that you need to load up the squad as well. It's a simple technique, but it doesn't have help. Now that's a simple technique, right? But it doesn't have help. It stops you getting players you don't need. But what if there's areas of the pitch you're not quite sure on? Well, that's where this year's FM has really come up trumps with the data hub. And that's the next part I use to build the team ready for a new season. This is granular. Are you ready? Granular, by the way, is my new favourite word, meaning very detailed. And we've got our players there. So I've got rid of one, two, three, four, five. So I now need at least five. But I've always had this nagging thing about my midfield. Are they doing enough work to help out the centre-backs? Am I destroying the centre-backs too much? Can these boys or have they done enough? That's where we go at the data hub. So we're into data hub now under team performance. And I've put a big emphasis on the defensive aspect of the team because I'm happy with the attacking aspect. We've been really good. And when I say really good, I mean really good. We're the top scorers in the league by a country mile with 75 goals. But the issue is next door to that. We're the worst defense in the top 10 with 56. So that's why the emphasis on the data hub is in defense. So we go straight to defensive efficiency and you can see that there we are. Now we're not in the nice green area where we want to be. Looks like the defense is too busy. Impenetrable, so they're doing the best they can, but it's busy. And that leads me to think, are the midfield helping out the defense enough? On to tackling next, which is obviously going to be key. And this is where 
Crack start to show. Lots of tackles, yes, but poor tackling, meaning they're not making the right tackles, they're not winning tackles, and we're one of the worst in the league. We need to be over here. Yes, making lots of tackles, but we need stronger tackling. Into team defending, and there we are again in the red zone. Fewer blocks, fewer clearances. So that could be a combination of my defenders not doing their job, my wing backs be too high up the pitch, or the central midfielders not helping out. This one is not about the midfielders as much. Fewer headers, poor heading. That's pretty much double underlined to my decision to start getting some centre backs in, doesn't it? And defensive actions, we're making a large percentage there. You can see that most of our defensive actions are in our own penalty area. So we're putting ourselves under constant pressure. So I'm asking my midfield to come back and help out. And I don't think they're doing that. And that's what we're going to look at now. So what we do now is. We go and bully those midfielders, have a look at their stats too. So there's the midfielders. I'm not so bothered about the Mazala Milinkovic because he's in a very attacking role. He spends most of his time up there, so I'm not expecting him back to help out. But these two, especially the deep line playmaker, your box-to-box -box midfielder, you're expecting a bit of defensive workload from them boys. So it looks like that's where we might have been lacking. So let's have a look. We go to Di Francesco. There he is. He has started 22 games this season. Mostly, I'd say, if not all, in that deep line playmaker role which does require a bit of defensive work as well we we'll do exactly the same like we did on the team data hub we go to reports play performance and we've got it all lined up now because i had a suspicion about the defensive work of the midfielders we've got some up and you can see some of these aren't that pretty so first up we've got a suspicion about the tackling let's have a look we've got the tackling let's see where alberto is there he is arguably in my formation the deep line playmaker is probably going to be in a position to make more tackles and he is making a lot of tackles but they're not very good the poor tackling is one of the worst in the league only just better than this crew this ragtag bunch down here so alberto that's somewhere where we might look to improve if we expand on this a little bit more defending of midfielders in serie b this season you can see fewer blocks fewer clearances alberto He's kind of in that range, isn't he? He's got a few clearances, but not that many. And he's way off being up here, which is probably where I need him to be. His role might not be helping as a deep line playmaker, but still, he is the most defensive of our midfielders, so it's something we need to look at. This is emphasised a little bit by possession for midfielders. You can see here, infrequently wins the ball. Reliable in possession. He's just on the barrier there between reliable and kind of loose, but he's not winning the ball that much. So this is what, something we need to look at. We've got two choices here. We can either decide that Alberto is just not up to it and replace him, or we decide the role he's playing is not right for him, move him to a different role, and perhaps bring in a more defensive-minded midfielder. Now, we could probably let Alberto off with that if he was doing his other job, the passing, the creation of a playmaker would. So we'll have a look. Passing midfielders. Here we go. So what I want to see is lots of passes and accurate passing. But as you can see, Alberto is a little bit way off here. He's down in the fewer passes zone on the border of accurate and inaccurate. So, Alberto, I think this is going to mean the chop, my son. You could do that in every position if you want. If you've got suspicions about your players after watching the season, get in that data hub and have a look. Antonio Palumbo is playing box-to-box -box midfielder. Is he doing the job? Is he giving me enough tackles? We've got a tackling on midfielders. There we go. Same issue. Same issue. Lots of tackles, but poor tackling. So, you can see instantly where the weak point of my team is it's that central midfield hub not winning the ball back enough on the flip side he's doing a little bit better than alberto in some other areas so the another option for me is to shift palumbo over to that deep line playmaker slot and get myself a new box-to-box -box midfielder this data hub is going to open up a few windows for us in that regard but on closer reflection and i look at him a bit deeper he's doing the same the same as alberto fewer blocks fewer clearances antonio my friend if I want to get to Serie A, you're out as well, my son. I've now removed Palumbo from the position as well. This is a brutal world we're living in. If the data hub wasn't there, he probably would have survived. I might have even moved him across into deep line playmaker. But now he's out and you can see how much work we've got to do. We finished sixth. We got to the semis of the playoff to get to Serie A. A couple of players we've lost through no fault of our own. But we're making improvements in four key positions down the spine of the team there. Thanks to a combination of watching the game last season... And the data hub. And last point on the data hub, I know there's a few players that are doing really well, such as Goncalves, who is my left wing back. If I go to assists for defenders, for example, look at that. There you can see he's one of the better defenders in the league for assists at that wing back position. Highly creative, high assister 
he's in, he's in the conversation, isn't he? But he's also a bit loose in possession. He's winning the ball back well, but he's loose in possession. So you can change your tactics slightly thanks to this information. All we do with this is, I'm going to go to his PIs. I'm just going to add in, take fewer risks. So he's making less risky passes. He's winning the ball back. He'd be a bit more safe, keep the ball a little bit better. That's going to set us up well for next season. So we've got a couple of ways on recruitment and what we're going to do and search around. So we're happy with that. But now I need to look at the backroom team, the coaching staff. If this is a long-term save, that's what you need to do. If you're in a journeyman, it's not that important because you're jumping between clubs. Messina, I plan to be here for 10, 15 seasons. So the time to get the backroom structure is probably two seasons ago. But let's do it now. First off, the positives. The positives are I've got a full squad of backroom team you see i've got no gaps there i've got 10 coaching staff my recruitment team's full and so is my medical team that's a big win if you have gaps still in your backroom department get them filled get them roles filled you want a full coaching team it's all well and good having a full coaching team but are they good enough now we check out the bars down the bottom there this is going to help us weigh it up so first we have a quick look at the coaching team comparison here the highest average and the lowest average if we're down here we know we're in trouble but off a quick glance we can see we're pretty well so goalkeepers for example you've got shot stopping handling let's have a little look so the goalkeeper shot stopping we're currently sixth in serie b which is not too bad is it udinese are top and they're gonna be they just came down from serie a they're a, they're a class above to be honest as we move across the goalkeeper handling you can see the same theme udinese they are the ones to be and we're not too bad in fact, when it comes to distribution, we're actually fourth best in Serie B. So once you've had a little look at those three there, your goalkeeper ones, go and have a look at your coach. If you're not happy with it, get over to your coaches. So click onto your coaching team and go down to your goalkeeping coach. Mine is Marco Onorati. There he is. As I click on him, at my level with these sort of attributes, he's pretty much where I want to be. He's got tens across the board. Not bad at all. Could I improve him? Yes. But you need to pay attention to his contract. His contract expires 2024. You can offer him mutual termination, but it is still going to cost you money. So you need to ask yourself, can you do better? Do you need to do better? And you do that for all the various aspects of your coaching team. Now, as I go across this, you can see Udinese are the top of it all. They were class above the Aris Serie A team. And I do believe they won the league. So back up the go. As far as we're concerned, though, remember, we are tiny. Predicted to finish 20th in this league. The media see us as a team from Serie Chi, but our coaching staff is a little bit different. We've got fifth place defending there, sixth place attacking, third place for fitness. So we're doing a lot of things right, and that's probably where you need to be. At the minute, I'm pretty happy with my coaching team. You can look further at this under your coaching responsibilities tab here. So as you can see, I haven't got a great, big, huge team. I've got myself, Benny Carboni, keeper coach, fitness coach, and two other coaches. So the workload is quite high. But we were quite well off in terms of the league comparison. So if we take defending, for example, it looks like I'm covering tactical alongside Federico, the main coach. So let's have a look at Federico like we did with Marco Onorati, the goalkeeping coach. There he is. Now, if you're looking at his defensive attributes, again, 11. So it's not bad at all, is he? He's pretty decent for the status of the club. Can I improve on him? Quite possibly. Is it a pressing issue? Not for me, no. If it is for you, you find yourself your coaching levels are a little bit down that's why i urge you to get involved in the coaching market as long as the contracts aren't too long i'm going to cripple you financially so overall i'm pretty happy with my staff but i have seen a couple of issues and areas of improvement we can do for example if you look at my attacking coaching i'm handling it and so is benito carboni now if you think of benito carboni for people of a certain age he was a glorious attacking player but that doesn't always cross over to his coaching abilities. If we hover over Benito Carboni, you can see his coaching is only a six. Now this is a bit worrying considering myself and Benito are taking the attacking coaching. If you go onto myself, these boys have obviously never seen me pinging 50 yards as in my Sunday league team, but they've only given me an eight. So that is an area I need to improve, but we have an issue. My coaching team is already full. So this is what I want you to do. Now, we might not be successful at this. We're not the richest team in the world. My board may say no, no, no. But this is what you should definitely do. Even if your coaching team are full, get over to here to the little dot, drop it down. And let's go over the coaches allowed. And we're going to ask our board to give us some more coaches so we can improve the coaching setup. 
They're going to get back to you in a couple of days. I just want to up my levels here and do what we can. We're not one of the best teams in the league, but if we can up our coaching backroom team, it's going to be a hell of a help. The same goes for your scouting as well, your recruitment team. I really want this upped. I really do want it upped because it's a long-term save. At the minute, we're ninth in judging player ability. Analyzing data was sixth and judging potential was sixth. So we're kind of middle of the road. This is an area I'm going to look at and try and focus on in this off-season. And finally, one that gets overlooked quite a lot is your medical team. Now, I've had a lot of injuries this season, and when I look at this, it kind of makes a bit more sense now. It's something you kind of easily forget, myself included. So, physio levels, look at this. Average level in Serie B, we are 17th. We're one of the worst teams in the medical departments, so that's going to explain quite a lot. We go over here to sports science, we're middle of the road again. So, this area here is one we certainly need to improve on. And the last point on staffing, I told you it was going to be a detailed video crew, I told you. So it's the performance analyst. Now this is linked to your data hub. Now if you don't have quality performance analysts, you're not going to get the best use of it. In fact, we need to improve ours. Do you remember this little shot? So if I click on any one of these, defensive efficiency, for example, you can see down here it says intermediate analysis, meaning we have a fairly good quality analyst team with a good number of resources and the data we provide should be of decent standard improving the quality of the analysis team will improve the quality of the analysis so we can need to get a little bit better there i want to see this in glorious green saying advanced that's the goal getting your staff in all in order and improving it by seeing what the other teams in the league are doing is only going to help the bigger picture it's going to help you grow as a club and also they're all kind of linked in together you think of the analyst with a data hub which links to recruitment which also links into scout assignments, which we'll get on to later on. So next up, something a little bit different, and it's very handy if you're working on a budget like I'm going to be next season. I mean, there's my budget already in place for next season. You can see it up here. At the minute, I've got £1,000. Next season, they've trekked me to zero, so it's going to be fun, right? So the main reason I do this is to bulk up the squad because I haven't got a big budget. I still need to zone in on those peak players there. I'm going to use loans and free transfers to try and get them in. But to bulk the squad up, we're going to retrain a couple of players so they cover more than one position. An example of that is this kid, Matea Matezi. Now he's 21 years old. He hasn't really done much for us in the two and a half seasons we've had him. I don't see him fulfilling the early potential. At the minute, he's stuck in this one role as a central midfielder. But he's got all-round attributes. Not great, but they are all-round. So I think I can retrain him to help cover elsewhere on the pitch. So at the minute he's just down as a standard midfield centre, but looking at his attributes, he looks quite well suited to be a pretty standard, decent little fullback. So if I drop into fullback support there, see his attributes covers it pretty well, other than pace, which is not a big disaster because he's literally going to be back up. That's going to be his new role. He's going to start learning that from the first day of pre-season, and that's going to give me a brand new utility player. So what we've done with Matez, he will do with the development center players that i don't think are gonna progress like i want them to so it won't affect them if i add a couple of positions here and there by retraining them just giving us some backup for when injuries hit it's a decent little thing to do especially in pre-season okay traits next now i'm doing a series on traits in my fm22 tips channel so if you're interested in that get over there have a little look i've done four so far on different roles and what to use them for now off season pre-season now, off-season is where you have a look at your squad and think, how can I improve certain players, such as Goncalves? Now, first glance at him, he's not, nothing special. He's only 22, though, and at my level, he's a very, very good wing-back. He was one of the best-performing wing-backs in the league. Now, if I remove my fat head, you will see currently he has no player traits. We've got ourselves a block of clear, ladies and gentlemen. I can add to his game by getting him to train some player traits as soon as he gets back from his little holiday in the beaches of Portugal, ready for the season ahead. So this is something you won't be able to do, obviously, in off-season. If you go to development and training and go down to discuss new trait, you can't do it until he gets back from holiday. When he gets back, then you can get in there and start building your traits. If you're unsure of what traits to go for for your players, like I said, get into that playlist, have a little look. For me, I'm going to add some traits to this lad. He's a good age. I want him to get further forward because in our system, which we'll be playing next season, he is the outlet ball down the left-hand side. If I can add a trait of get further forward or gets forward whenever possible, one of those perhaps, it's going to add to his game. The perfect time to get your scouts out and about as soon as that final whistle blows and the final game of the season. Get them out there. Get them looking. Now at this point, 
I'll be honest with you. Explaining the scouting system in Football Manager has never been a strength of mine. I know how to do it. I could do it quite well. But getting my point across is not great. And that's why I recommend this video from my man, Demand More FM. There it is. Link above. It's a great little guide on scouting, what to do, how to set them up. Go check it out. So it's important to set your scouting relative to your scale. For example, there's no point me going around looking for the next Mbappe who's coming out of contract because we're not going to get him, are we? So we need to look a little bit lower than that. And I've done that with my scouts. You can see my main scout is Vicente, not the chief scout, but look at his attributes. 14 for judging play ability and 17 for potential. I've got most of my hopes on this man. Now, I've already sent him watching the Portuguese Cup. He's came back. Didn't really get anything from that. Too expensive. Now I've got him away watching the reserves in the Netherlands. He's came back with 32 booming results. Now, what I like about this scout search is not only do you get all the youngsters, so maybe there's going to be players getting released or players available for loan from the bigger clubs like Ajax, but you also get some veterans as well whose contracts are running out as I click on this. We've got 32 players to have a look through. As soon as I start recording this video, I'm going to be in there having a look, trying to find some players for next season. For example, crew, he's came up with this one, Nesta Zahu, a Frenchman who is at Feyenoord, available for loan. I like the look of that. He could do some decent damage in Serie B. This links in with this. So we go to the world icon and have a look under international competitions here. I can see the FIFA under 20 World Cups coming on. So all these teams are taking part. I'm going to send one of my scouts to the FIFA under 20 World Cup. And hopefully we can find a little gem more likely to get on loan, but you never know, do you? So big Joel, the man with the knowledge of Ivory Coast, Spain, amongst other places, he's on his way to the under 20 World Cup. And hopefully in this off season, he might find us a gem. Right, last up, we're going to prepare ourselves a second formation. If you're still with us and you've watched this video right the way through, my God, you're a trooper. Told you it was a long one. So, you've got yourself a formation you like, you're confident in it, by all means plan for that formation for the season. But always have a couple in your back pocket just in case it goes a little bit tits up. Because now and again, FM tends to do that to us, doesn't it? Especially when we're on a high, you come crashing down. Now my recommendation would be to have alternate versions of the tactic you're already using. You don't want to drift too far away from it, too drastic. You don't want any of these free slots for example i've got a 4 3 one, two here wouldn't be too wise to completely flip that up to something like a winger base system because we're not going to have them at the club and they're not going to take to it so what i want to do is have versions of this that the players know and they're comfortable with now sarah chi we won the league playing that system and you can see three up front it's not too different from what we're playing there different roles slightly different but we're going to keep that in our back pocket now knowing what we know about the players we've got now and the way they're performing we can tweak that tactic as well so they're even more comfortable with that so there's going to be two there straight off the bat maybe i need a more defensive version because those two are hella aggressive aren't they so it's probably wise to think of a formation that we can use for away games whether it's just dropping the line the defensiveness a bit dropping a player back here and there i've just loaded this one in straight away it came to my mind if you've seen the levante video you'll know all about it there it is it's again it's a narrow system but it's just that bit more solid in the middle compared to the Stinger Zero. But you can see now we've got three tactics there, all different. So we've got the three up top, the perfect plex. We've got the Stinger Zero there, the 4-3-1-2. And then we've got this one here, the Levante World Order, 4-1-3-2. All pretty similar. So the guys are going to be used to that sort of system. We're not going completely away from the script, playing wingers or anything like that. Three different formations ready for the new season ready to get trained as soon as these boys are back from holiday and there we have it crew those are seven points seven little triggers that i go through when the season finishes when i can get down and dirty and think about my squad when i'm in a long-term save that really helps for the coming season when improving that team is so vital for performance we're going into the next season in serie b with a little eye on trying to get to serie a in our third season we'll be doing it on twitch next week be great to see you there if you can make it. If not, there'll be a review of the season at some point on the channel.